in an adolescent especially when the adolescents are being brought to us by the parents in the name of correcting them so we discussed some a few points and then uh, had uh, a case demonstration after that however uh, there were many many questions regarding how to deal with parents because parents are you know, at times they become much more difficult than the adolescents themselves because they want an easy quick and automatic answer to all of the issues of their children and therefore we thought that today uh, we'll address this issue of dealing with the parent of an adolescent so that many things can come up during the issue during the session during the communication and later on if time permits we can again uh, have a session with an adolescent of course in terms of role play and interactions so before we start today and uh, before we start with how a typical parenting session goes or stuff i usually uh, give this metaphor to parents which helps them understand their children better Uh, right now what savita ma'am and nidhi ma'am just said that the cognitive uh, and developmental stage we know is at the crossroads there is cognitive uh, the changes uh, cognitive changes are occurring very very rapidly the emotional changes are occurring very rapidly and all this is happening on a base of a hormonal turmoil so of course this phase is not easy for adolescents however in addition to this what parents are worried about is ki hamara bachcha na dumb nahi hai he is very smart he is very intelligent if he is so intelligent and so smart why doesn't he or she understand maturity kahan gayi and it takes a lot of effort from our side to explain to parents smartness is one thing and maturity is a completely different things and we need to explain it to parents that although are the kids of today are super smart super intelligent some areas of the brain which help in judgment maturity wisdom conscience etc they are still the last to develop something like impulse control it is the last to develop cognitively but parents do find it difficult to understand because they are um, they have been aware of the child's smartness since probably the child was two that he operated smartphone better than us right when he was 5 years old so uh, the metaphor that or example that i often use with parents before starting any session or practical session with parents is uh with this small principle that our cognition the development of our cognition it is directly proportional to the amount of stimulus received so cognitive development is directly proportional to the amount of stimulus received now what do we mean by that Mm, let's take a common example here and i would be um, happy if all of you are participative here just to demonstrate this principle mm, let's say uh, we can take uh, we uh, i'm not asking for volunteers right now i'm just uh, finishing with this metaphor so what i wanted to tell you if we have to compare the development cognitive development of us and our children let us say as parents i ask you and we take one stimulus for example cars so when you were kids when you were 6 or 7 years of age how many cars did you observe on the road yes anybody Okay, Shaila Ji, Ma'am is saying one. <laughs> Sudeep Sir is saying hardly any, not much, very few. Okay, so let's say your age on an average is forty, fifty, whatever. The amount of stimulus in terms of one category that is cars. Let's say if we name it as X, please note it was quite few. आप लोग जो forty plus होंगे वो तो बता भी देंगे कि मारुति थी, अपना Fiat थी. ambassador thi and a couple of things more now as compared to what you saw the amounts of cars the frequency of cars and the models of cars so the variety 
द फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड द रेंज ऑफ एक्सपोजर अगर इसे हम एक्स कहते हैं तो इफ वी कंपेयर इट टू वॉट टूडेज चाइल्ड एक्सपीरियंसिस इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्टिम्यूलस वो कितना होगा सो so, आज कंपनीज ही पचास है और हर एक कंपनी के ऑन एन एवरेज अगर हम पांच मॉडल्स लेके चले तो अब सोचिए कि वो बच्चे का स्टिम्यूलस रेंज वेराइटी एंड एक्सपोजर तीनों के इसमें कितना होगा सो इफ माई स्टिम्यूलस वॉज एक्स माई चाइल्ड स्टिम्यूलेशन इज मिनिमली हंड्रेड एक्स ओके और इसलिए ना हम प्रैक्टिकली देखता है that if me and my son are driving and a car overtakes us in speed how will my brain process it mera dimag itna hi bolega kya rash driving kar raha hai kitni fast ja raha hai if i think about the model of the car zyada se zyada shayad main uska company kaun sa hai wo guess kar lungi identify karungi ki ya audi hai ya bmw hai kyunki wo bahut speed mein gayi but the 5 year old sitting right beside me in a fraction of a second will say q3 t and i look at him like this how could you in kaise pata chala so it's not something magic it's not any rocket science it's the simple principle jitna stimulation utna processing speed fast more the stimulus faster is the processing speed मुझे एक्स स्टिमुलस था मेरा एक्स स्पीड है आज हंड्रेड एक्स का स्टिमुलेशन है राइट फ्रॉम द बर्थ उनका हंड्रेड एक्स जा रहा है सम डेकेट्स बैक व्हेन मदर्स यूज टू डिलीवर देयर चाइल्ड उनको एक रूम में रखा जाता था लाइट कम बहुत टेम्परेचर वेरिएशंस नहीं कान कवर करो ब्ला 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 आज क्या है आज जब भी बच्चा बर्थ लेता है द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट दैट किड इज एक्सपोज टू इज मोबाइल्स क्योंकि उसके फोटो जाते हैं क्लिक 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 और वो बच्चा देखता है एंड वी वंडर कि अभी से ये गेज कैसे दे रहा है माइलस्टोन्स हैव चेंज्ड सारी पीडियाट्रिक के टेक्स्ट बुक्स हम देख ले अगर इफ वी कंपेयर द माइलस्टोन्स टू इन टेक्स्ट बुक थर्टी इयर्स बैक दे हैव चेंज्ड प्लीज नोट ये हम जो एग्जाम्पल देखा ये सिर्फ आर्स का था अभी कुछ भी ले लो विजुअल स्टिमिला में टीवी पे चैनल्स कितने होते थे प्रोग्राम कितने होते थे आज चैनल्स कितने हैं उस पर चॉइसिस कितने हैं हम जब खाना खाने बाहर जाते थे पेरेंट्स के साथ तो क्या ऑर्डर करते थे कितना वॉइस था कितना चॉइस था आज घर में बच्चा डिसाइड करता है कि मैक्सिकन खाना है या इटालियन खाना है सो वाइट फ्रॉम विजन स्मेल ऑडिटरी स्टिमिनस टेस्ट टच हर एक में स्टिम्यूलाई हैव इंक्रीज ट्रिमेंडसली और उन्हें ये स्टिम्यूलेशन मिल रहा है राइट फ्रॉम द मोमेंट दे आर बॉर्न नाउ मेरी कैपेसिटी एक्स है मेरा प्रोसेसिंग स्पीड एक्स है उनका प्रोसेसिंग स्पीड हंड्रेड एक्स है एंड देर फोर दे अपियर टू बी स्मार्टर दैन मी फास्टर दैन मी डे टू डे में हमें इसके बहुत एग्जाम्पल्स मिलते हैं ना कि चार पांच साल का बच्चा क्या क्या कर लेता है फास्ट देर ब्रेन वर्क बट अगेन दिस इज द पॉइंट एक्सैक्टली विच वी टॉक विथ पेरेंट्स दैट हंड्रेड एक्स द जस्ट मीन्स द स्पीड ऑफ हंड्रेड एक्स द स्मार्टनेस ऑफ हंड्रेड एक्स बट नॉट द मेच्योरिटी ऑफ हंड्रेड एक्स सो स्पीड है लेकिन जजमेंट नहीं है एंड अनलेस एंडल पे अंडरस्टैंड दिस वो कंफ्यूजन इन दोनों चीजों में करते रहेंगे एंड दिल एक्सपेक्ट देर एडोलसेंट टू एक्ट वाइजली नॉट जस्ट स्मार्टली सो दिस अगेन कम्स टू मी बिकॉज दे डोंट हैव दिस एक्सपोजर और दे डोंट हैव द साइंटिफिक बैकग्राउंड विच टेल्स दैम दैट प्रोसेसिंग स्पीड इज डायरेक्टली प्रोपोर्शनल टू स्टिमिलाई पॉइंट नंबर अब अगर ये कॉन्सेप्ट क्लियर है कि उनका ना ब्रेन का मॉडल ही अलग है हमारा अलग वेवलेंथ पे चल रहा है उनका अलग वेवलेंथ चल रहा है जैसे इफ यू कंपेयर आर ब्रेन टू कंप्यूटर अगर इनका ब्रेन हम कहेंगे विंडो टेन एक्स है हमारा ब्रेन कौन सा मॉडल है अभी ये अगर विंडोज टेन है बच्चे आज के तो वॉट आर वी अली इलेवन है 
<laughs> okay and some older people will say that we are still five years so what is important is what will happen if a typewriter gives instructions to windows 10 what will happen will the windows 10 be able to grasp the instructions it probably won't and however hard this typewriter tries on i keep on pushing the buttons of my typewriter it won't reach uh, yes sir ali yeah uh, there is a uh, request that continue in only in english because some people are non hindi speaking everybody sure. is there sure sure sir sure, sure. yes yeah. okay so my point is no matter how hard the typewriter tries windows 10 won't understand mm-hmm. its language because its wiring is different so again this becomes the second important point that we need to um, uh, communicate with the parents that we to change our language of communication not in terms of language per se but the principles of language which we are using with them when i was small probably i was okay taking the authority of my mother father i never challenged them rather the first time when i asked my parents why should i listen to you i remember not it was not before 22 till then i respected authority and of course there are multiple reasons to it some being that i respected them because they knew more than because this google parent was not available for me at that time secondly i was dependent on them for many of things today that's not the case today you don't know even though my parents don't give me anything i have many sources at least this is what they perceive because they have always been living in a pro- uh, in a world of plenty so our childhood probably went in an uh, a zone wherein we knew that how hard our parents are working we saw them we saw them calculating money which today's children don't so this is one thing we feared them because we knew that they know more as which today children don't because they think that they know more bet- uh, more than us or better than us so second principle communicating is the language part of it authoritarian language generally doesn't help so we need to be authoritative also need to be open for the language of negotiations parents often uh, ask me is how come this is valid we are elder they should listen to us so again we need to tell them that things are not ideal anymore although i agree to you on terms of your wish that because you are more women and wiser in terms of experience they need to listen to you but just because we wish it's not a rule they will not and so i should be able to look at my child sitting at the same level with me and talk it out rather than the principle of one upmanship which says i will talk and you need to listen that is the second part and the third and last part which i generally tell parents is that when parents argue that why should we make all the ch- changes they are smaller they are young they are adolescents we are more mature we have experiential wisdom we have seen the world we have seen 40 summers agreed that you are age wise you are elder you are more mature you are experienced but the problem is when we talk of evolution does evolution ever go backwards just like a river has anyone seen a river flow backwards so if we expect that the generation who is next to us learns our language and gets back to us it will be extremely difficult for them and that's why when we give examples na that when we were small this was not the case they are not able to quickly relate to it because they have already they are already born in an era where they have seen the advanced world so the third thing is evolution is not going to flow backwards and so it is better for me to learn the language of my kid rather than expecting my kid to learn my language going back and then communicate with me so once i uh, explain the developmental gradient of the kid what is happening with this x and 10x 
then the parents are at least better able to understand as to what is happening in these kids brain and then start a better communication before we go ahead any questions on this part of x and 10x or else we can start with the demo session now uh i uh, amrit sir uh, tofan sir is it okay if we take questions right now for a couple of minutes yes it's okay right on yeah, yes yeah, yeah. uh yashashvi i guess uh, uh, are the participants allowed to unmute themselves yeah yeah uh, hello ma'am uh, so ma'am uh, my question was the explanation of explaining the parents can be done when the parents are educated when they understand about evolution and all what about uh, parents who are not uh, educated how do we explain the same thing to them hmm Could you explain that maybe? Sure, sure, sure. So if this X and hundred X formula doesn't work with them because they don't understand the processing speed further, you can just explain it to them in terms of simple examples. For example, when uh you were small, how many options did you have while watching TV? Most of them will say we had Doordarshan, and later on we started with a couple of channels. so with less number of options you are able to choose better just for example you go to a shop and you have three pairs of shoes to select from you would find it easier to select a pair of shoes for yourself but let's say we keep ourselves in the place of today's children and now is there any difference where you were choosing from amongst three pairs of shoes and your child who has 300 or probably 3000 pairs to choose from so one part is there is a problem of plenty there is availability of lot many things than we had and so things were easier for us studying was easier for us because distractions were few let's say if we had these many distractions when we were in 10th we had facebook twitter insta everything we had youtube and internet and everything we had a mobile constantly in our hands wouldn't you get distracted so while uh, with use of examples in our day to day life parents will be able to relate to it better that yes i can't constantly keep comparing my child the way with the way i was or with the way a ideal person should be in that age because that era was different and this era is different with n number of stimulus to them they with presence of n number of stimuli to them their brain will tend to run amongst those stimuli more than my brain ever ran is this clear mm yashashvi uh, is this clear i think so we can okay, go ahead i can ha uh, let's let's move ahead any other question or we can then uh, there is a question in the chat box if parents are from a typewriter age then how can how they can try to go with <laughs> Uh, right. Uh, again, other language. I hope the children are not listening to this cast. <laughs> yes. So uh, even though the parents are from the typewriter age, see the parents have intelligence and wisdom that they can grasp the language of Windows Ten. What is it? One example that I gave you was negotiations. That instead of just ordering. we involve them in talking we ask their opinions now you would say if we ask them opinions they would just jump on to or demand that we listen to all the my child alternatives so often what parents tend to do is first they would give alternatives they tell do this don't do that children are not happy with them they are not open to it okay if alternative is to be given the parents can give alternatives in a judgmental way in a biased way let's not try to do that let's be open while providing alternatives when the children are small this is easier for example a milk or full glass of milk now as parents i know everybody of you might say 
the child will ask for half a glass of milk. Fine. Start with a bigger glass and respect the child's wish of taking milk in that half glass. As the child grows up, give him options. Just that while I am giving my child some options, I need to lay a base or I need to give a perspective about decision making. I will respect your choice. I just want you to learn healthy decision making and just remember that every choice has a price. Now, what happens is, although parents warn children about these and yet children make impulsive choices, what the, uh, the mistake which happens on parents' part is they don't let the child pay the price or the or maybe um, live the consequence of his they might go with the unhealthy choice and when the time comes that the children take ownership of their choice and live what they have earned for themselves then parents feel sorry for them they feel that it's not correct to let the child be punished for his immature decision but my point here is unless and until my child takes the ownership on a wiser decision making. So point number one is offer alternatives, talk with them while they express. Let's listen to them non-judgmentally. This is the most difficult part because we are not able to relate with their choices. Be it the series they watch on Netflix or maybe the friends they have, the company they keep. Parents are many a times not happy about their choices. Yet, if we really want our children to open up to us and talk with us, we need to be very, very non-judgmental about their choices. See, it's all about developmental stage. I'm sure all of us, when we were kids, we had many, many things, uh, ha a habit of collecting many, many things. Some of us collected awesome. marbles, some of us collected stamps, seashells, and whatnot. And then someday my mother went on a cleaning spree and she threw all the things that I had collected over years. Please note, for her, it was trash. But for me, it was a treasure. And how sad I felt when my mom just picked up and threw that treasure away. So according to their age and stage, they will find some things attractive, some things correct, some things good for them. Unless until I'm non-judgmental about these things, I won't be able to invite my child to talk with me, sit with me and talk with me across the table. So this is what I mean by when I say that we need to learn the language of Windows 10. I'll be non-judgmental. I'll be accepting at least till it is on the level of hearing them out. And the third important part is, of course, letting them face the consequences of their decisions. So I agree when it comes to biological danger, we are not going to let them pay the price. But 99% of the issues are not of direct biological threat. And the earlier we start this, the better for me as well as my child. Is this okay, sir? Okay. okay. Any other question? Shall we move ahead, Amrit, sir? Yes, please. Okay. I think we are. Okay, okay, okay. So now let's have a session and see how uh, the uh, interaction goes between a mental health professional, a psychiatrist, or a psychologist, and a parent who has an adolescent with behavior issues. So any volunteers who could play the role of a parent? Uh, yes, ma'am, Manisha. Yes, uh, good evening, madam. Uh, good evening. So, Manisha, you'll be playing the uh, role of a parent, right? Yes, yes. Uh, I'll be I'll be speaking in Hindi and English. I'll try and speak in English, but uh, I'm comfortable with Hindi. So, I hope because when it comes to emotional things, I think my native language becomes better. Uh, 
<laughs> I hope it is okay. But uh, just try to keep it in English as much as possible. I will try. I will try. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, can you just give me a background of what case you are going to present? How? What would be the age of the child uh, here? Uh, I would present the case of a child of my son mm-hmm. who is in first year of engineering. and uh, he is basically addicted to mobile phones he is not studying properly and uh, basically the consequences of getting addicted to mobile primarily mm-hmm. and i am just worried about his future okay. that that will be the case that i'll be presenting sure and the name of the child here in this case i can say nikhil nikhil okay yeah so tofan prati sir with your kind permission can we start yes please Okay, thank you, sir. So, uh, Manisha ji, what we'll do is let's not keep it a first session because the first session generally goes into history taking. Yes. So we'll uh, just uh, I'm saying it aloud that this would be our second session. Yes. I know the history of your child. I have taken the history and I have advised for uh, therapy sessions for your child as well as his parents. Yes. And uh, probably you are coming to me for the second time today. Yeah. Uh, am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes, you're clear. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Right. So uh, let's begin the session now. Um, okay. Manisha ji, well, uh, namaste. Ah, ji, namaste, namaste, madam. Yes, uh, madam. Uh, you had told me to get my son. He was supposed to come for this session, but he is just not ready to come. He is just not ready to come. तो मैं पूछने आई हूँ मैं क्या करूँ मैं परेशान हो गई इस बच्चे से अब when I told him कि हाँ वो counselor madam है वो आपको help करेंगी she'll help you get out of it so he says I don't have any problems why do you want me to go to the counselor you hmm. told me once I went and now I don't want to go there anymore hmm. तो मुझे समझ में नहीं आ रहा है मैं क्या करूँ मैं I'm really very very fed up of this hmm. I'm worried hmm. I I can see your concern, uh, Manisha ji, because uh, it's your adolescent, and with all the issues, you really want him to take help at this point. I can of course see that, uh, but let's say uh, let's consider the next month, hmm? and if this in this month he is not at all willing to come here, hmm? however hard you try to force him or you know motivate him to come to me, let us consider the worst outcome that Nikhil is not willing to come and see. A psychiatrist, a psychologist, anybody. Can you think about the things now? What do you and me actually have in our hands right now? If he is not willing to come, madam, how can he get uh, cured if he doesn't come to you? I mean, I was told when I first considered uh, consulting you, I was told that you should go. के पास में ले जाओ साइकेट्रिस्ट के पास में ले जाओ वो उसे अच्छा कर देंगे तो मेरे हाथ में तो कुछ नहीं है ना मैडम जो करना है वो आप ही ने करना है उसे तो आना ही पड़ेगा यहाँ पर उसके बिना कैसे होगा आप बताइए मैं क्या कर सकती हूँ आई कैनोट डू एनी थिंग आई एम हेल्पलेस ओके ओके आई कैन सी द अमाउंट ऑफ वरी दैट यू आर कैरिंग राइट नाउ बट लेट मी जस्ट आस्क यू सिंपल क्वेश्चन इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स पैन आई नो निखिल डॉक टू यू मच ही डजेंट स्पेंड टू मच ऑफ टाइम विथ यू बट लेट से How much time do you actually spend with your son in a day, in terms of minutes or maybe hours? Earlier it was very good, madam. But nowadays he hardly speaks. But फिर भी say fifteen twenty minutes in a day. बस उससे ज़्यादा तो निखिल बात करता ही नहीं. Fine. So even yeah. let's consider that he speaks to. He is in front of you for twenty minutes in a day, and for okay. rest of the day. Although you are not directly communicating, you are in his direct environment. Is this true? Oh yes, yes. Now yes, let's say Nikhil comes and visits me. That would be forty-five minutes in fifteen days. Okay. Don't you think, Manisha ji, that you are in a better position to help him mold himself because of the quantum of time that you are in his presence? बट ही जस्ट डज नॉट कभी भी उससे कुछ बात करने लोगो तो ही गेट्स वेरी एग्रेसिव तुम्हें नहीं समझता यू पीपल डोंट लिसन टू मी लीव मी अलोन आई जस्ट लाइक टू गो टू माई रूम बस मुझे परेशान मत करो अब इसमें मैं कोशिश करूं भी तो कैसे करूं बचपन से उसे अपने साथ में किया है बहुत स्मार्ट लड़का है अच्छा लड़का है बुरा लगता है पर मैं कुछ कर नहीं पा रही मैडम अगर आप बोलेंगे भी की आई शुड सिट विथ हेम एन ऑल ही इज जस्ट नॉट रेडी टू टॉक टू मी Uh, okay, so Manisha ji, what I see here is that you are telling me about the problems, and I am trying to tell you about the solutions. At one time, we can either talk about the problem or the solution. What do you want to focus on? 
ये तो सोल्यूशन ही चाहिए मैम बट आप ही के पास में है वो यू कैन ओनली डू समिंग अबाउट इट लेट्स एटलीस्ट अग्री ऑन वन थिंग दैट फॉर द नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी मिनट इंस्टेड ऑफ टॉकिंग अबाउट वॉट्स नॉट राइट वॉट्स गोइंग रॉन्ग वॉट्स नॉट वर्किंग लेट अस शिफ्ट आर फोकस ऑन वॉट इज देयर इन आर हैंड्स एंड वॉट वी कैन डू टू हेल्प निखिल रियलाइज हिमसेल्फ बेटर एज अमन बींग Yeah, we'll try. Okay. Are we on the same page here? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So please note, I understand this is difficult for you. You love yeah. him very much. You have tried your best, but till now, have we worked as a team, you and me? No. Are you willing to give it a try? Yes. उसके लिए कुछ भी करूँगी, madam. मैं अभी तक करती आएँगी, कुछ भी करूँगी. चलिए एक पैर पे खड़े होके काम करते हैं फिर. Yes. <laughs> yes. I I I know how much every mother wants her son. I to have a child. I know that. Yes. Okay. Yes. The point is we need to shift our focus. Otherwise, we'll be stuck in digging the problems deeper. Okay. Okay. So listen. Uh, just now you gave an example that he just doesn't listen to me. Whenever he's there in front of me, he just says you don't understand and you never understand, and it's, there's no point talking to you. Can you give me an example? Last when this had happened, where he started something and uh, you know it did not go in a healthy direction. Every time it happens. Whenever I tell him, बेटा आप थोड़ा पढ़ाई की तरफ ध्यान दो ही स्कोरिंग वेरी लो मार्क्स मैडम दैट इज माई मेन कंसर्न तो थोड़ा पढ़ाई की तरफ ध्यान दो अपना टाइम मैनेजमेंट करो मोबाइल के ऊपर कम ध्यान दो ही जस्ट डजेंट लिसन यू यू लिव इट टू मी आई डू इट पर दिख रहा है ना मैडम रिजल्ट तो नहीं आ रहा है I'll ask you differently, Manisha ji. Tell me the incident where he was talking to you. Go into the past, few months back, maybe few years back, when he was talking to you, and probably you were not in a listening mode. के काम रहते हैं, busy तो रहते हैं, मदर लोग. तो अगर वो कभी कुछ आया होगा बताने के लिए कुछ तो मैंने उसको उस समय बेटा थोड़ी देर में सुनती हूँ करके आई वुड जस्ट गो ऑफ एंड डू सम वर्क अब ये तो बहुत कॉमन चीज है ना मैडम ये तो होता ही है मदर की लाइफ में फादर को उसके बिल्कुल टाइम नहीं होता है so maybe it has happened that when he wanted to talk to you either you were really really occupied into something at that time your priority was such that you know just uh, ignoring it was not completely in your hands and you gave it your priority has it ever happened that uh, nikhil was very angry and he was blurting something in front of you blaming some x y z guy and instead of listening him out You were in a hurry to give him advice that don't talk in such a language. What kind of foul words are you using? Has this kind of a communication occurred? What it was, ma'am, one time uh, he was mentioning about his professor or his school ke teacher, kuch ki usne mujhe galat marks diya wager hai. To maine usko bola, maine kaha, tu nahi padhai nahi kyu hogi? Teacher kyu aisa karenge? To apni padhai ki taraf dhyan de, to aage se aisi bari nahi aayegi. That is what I told him that time. Yeah. Okay. See again. we are not categorizing anything into right or wrong here we are just looking at this in a neutral way okay. yeah. now just try to visualize the scene in front of a uh, in front of a tv uh, in front of your eyes okay so a child has come from come home from college and he is really agitated and irritated okay Uh, why to see it on the TV? Let me say that you place yourself in the position of a girl who is just back from college, who is really, really angry and agitated. Something really bad has happened with her. Okay, so are you able to put yourself in these girl's shoes? I try, man. Yes, I, I, I try. Yeah. So you are really irritated because maybe your teacher has humiliated you in front of the entire class. Then it was not your fault. Okay. So you have to go and sit on the sofa. I'm your mother, and you say I'm irritated. I don't want to go and attend that stupid college. Hmm? You just say. 
Now, I will play two kinds of mothers in front of you. The first mother will say, what is this? Is this kind of a behavior? What is this, Manisha? First, pick up your bag. There are books in that. How come you are throwing your bag? Is this what we have taught you? And don't utter such words in, uh, about your teachers. I am sure it's you who has not studied and then creating such a scene. Hmm? How are you feeling, Manisha? मोर इरिटेटेड कि समझ नहीं रहे मेरे को शायद ऐसा लगेगा मुझे क्या तो मैं कुछ कह रही हूँ उससे पहले सुन तो लो जस्ट लिसन टू व्हाट आई एम सेइंग प्लीज लिसन या ओके नाउ लेट मी प्ले द सेकंड मदर एंड आई जस्ट से कि ओके मनीषा आई कैन सी दैट यू आर रियली रियली अपसेट डू यू फील लाइक टॉकिंग टू मी ओके नाउ सी Manisha can say ki yes that teacher don't I don't know what she thinks of her self blah 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 either you blurt out everything and you feel relieved or you just storm into your room and say no I don't want to talk to anybody right now in either of this case one thing is for sure that in your head you know that your mother is there available for you if you just start talking to me i will listen everything that you say i won't interrupt till you feel a bit of it has been emptied out so i'll allow the catharsis and then maybe once you feel better then i can talk about that yes this was really not fair what happened to you today but manisha tell me is labeling the teachers going to help us in any way So let's think about what you can do next. Whenever you are ready, let's say if you storm out in your room and don't open the door for half an hour, I have a choice to give you that privacy to cool down a bit, to settle down a bit. Hmm? Then I can just go near the door and say, "That better whenever you are comfortable. If you are hungry, let me know. I won't touch the topic." i won't show that i'm very desperate to help you right now because being an adolescent there is this need for privacy and independence that is growing in you so while respecting that i will cater to rest of your needs let me if you hungry probably the child is already hungry she will say yes give me something and maybe once you are better after half an hour after having something you will be in a better mood to discuss things with me okay. so manisha ji can we just think of this as a strategy that if i really want my child to communicate with me i will have to give that platform to my child where he or she can open up without the feel of being कर सकते हैं मैम वी कैन ट्राई बट अभी थोड़ा मुश्किल लगता है कि सिंस ही इज मैं उसे हाउ डू आई टेल हिम कि अच्छा तू बैठ मैं तेरा सुनने के लिए तैयार हूं आई डोंट थिंक ही इज ऑन दैट स्टेज एनीमोर आई थिंक ही इज क्रॉस दैट और ऐसा नहीं है कि आई डिड नॉट लिसन टू हिम बट या कभी-कभी हो जाता है मीन इट्स वेरी नॉर्मल फॉर अ पेरेंट टू बी बिजी एंड नॉट पे अटेंशन टू व्हाट द चाइल्ड इज सेइंग सो यू यू टेल मी हाउ टू डू दिस सो मे बी लेट्स नॉट पुश आवरसेल्फ टू मच इनटू इट सो दैट ही सेंसेस समथिंग इज गोइंग रॉन्ग विद माय मदर एंड शी इज टू मच इंटरेस्टेड इन एग्जैक्टली या आई से अचानक मां को क्या हो गया इतनी कैसे सुधर गई सो लेट इट नॉट अपीयर आर्टिफिशियल ओके or when you are spending this 15 20 minutes maybe when he is having coffee or tea in the morning or he is having dinner with you just be open to listen to him what is the proportion right now how much do you speak and how much does he can speak pehle thoda mera tha wo bhi baat karta tha but now it is just the moment we started just goes in a wrong way and uh, probably okay he will speak a few sentences i'll try and tell him jab kabhi mood theek rehta hai so i tell him a few things so us samay shayad mera proportion zyada rehta hoga okay okay so can we just But, take a couple of rules here uh, for example that whenever he is talking 
you control your urge to interfere okay oh yes yes i do that i i do that a couple of times yes. i have an interesting uh, acronym for you which i have many times used for myself uh, in my house now i have written this word uh, in number of uh, at a number of places the word is wait w a i t wait now this word doesn't just signify wait as in physical wait it has a full form W A I T stands for why am i talking just as a reminder okay so point number 1 that you can use is that you talk minimally and listen more openly मुझे लगता है बात करते समय की नहीं ये चीज जो तुम कह रहे हो वो ठीक नहीं है so yeah, he'll just say ki ma you you just you don't understand again he'll just say that you don't understand ma right, right. that's all so even for our advice to reach him better don't be a thing that you need to go into his good books before that for him to take yes. our advice in a better way yes yes okay yeah. so we are talking about changing our way see you have gone directly and you have seen how much does he listen very very little I am telling you. Let's try this way. Are you willing to try it for a week before uh, jumping onto the consequences? Right, ma'am. Ma'am, but I have a question. Hmm? I mean, I'm sorry. I'm going back. I mean, why should it happen? Because see, he has been my only child, brought up in a very nice way. We gave him like whatever according to his age, whatever he needed. We have provided him everything. So. हमें तो लग रहा था हमने उसे बहुत लाड़ प्यार से बहुत प्यार से बड़ा किया है सो व्हाई शुड दिस हैपन टू हिम आई मीन ही वाज अ ब्राइट स्टूडेंट नाउ ही डजंट स्टडी तो इट इट रियली हर्ट्स मी एंड दोस क्वेश्चंस कीप बॉदरिंग माय माइंड आई ट्राई टू आंसर टू अकॉर्डिंग टू द बेस्ट ऑफ माय अबिलिटीज बिफोर दैट मनीषा जी आई वांट टू जस्ट कंक्लूड दिस पार्ट ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन पॉइंट नंबर 1 इज यू आर गोइंग टू लिसन मोर टॉक लेस Point number two, you are going to show interest in his areas of interest. See, children of this age might talk about football, league matches. They might talk about the series they watch on Netflix. Can you just be open and show interest in what is it instead of saying "chi uh, Game of Thrones"? Can you say, "Ah, uh, what is it about? How does the story progress?" Can you just be open to his areas of interest? कोशिश करूंगी मैम क्योंकि वाकई मुझे नहीं समझ में आते हो बट हम बस दूसरा पाथ में देख रहे हैं हम राइट रॉन्ग में नहीं जा रहे हैं आज यस यस आज का हमारा इतना ही बोल है दैट यू एंड निखिल बॉन्ड वेल फाइन साउंड्स गुड या या यस आई विल ट्राई आई डेफिनेटली ट्राई ओके सो दिस इज द सेकंड थिंग द थर्ड थिंग इज for this one week you will avoid the topics just for a week so listen more talk less take talk less avoid avoid uh, talking to him about studies avoid talking to him about studies. and get interested in uh, what he wants to uh, what he in his world basically just what he understand him understand him when they rather okay. than continuously look at it, looking at him as my son he should be this way my son yeah, is going to be this way are you going to give you i'll, I'll definitely try this? i'll definitely try yeah okay, okay. go ahead manisha ji i'll just answer uh, your question wherein you asked as to why this is this happening yeah. in spite of i never very intelligent 
See, probably uh, I can explain this that in spite of having everything, why they get stuck in this mobile and things that are not helping them progress optimally. So there were two neighbors, and in their backyards, they had grown a lot of plants. <clears throat> the first neighbor had the habit of providing everything to his plants because he loved his plants. He loved his garden. So ample amount of water, you know, fertilizers, pesticides. He used to give everything that the plants needed. Of course, as a result, the plants were growing beautifully, lush green, very very healthy, and were beautiful. The second man, on the other hand, used to provide only that much amount which was necessary for their survival. Hmm? So he used to plant his water, uh, water his plants in a miserly way. Just that much amount of water which will allow the plant to survive, not more. Fertilizers or pesticides only and only if required if the plant is withering, not otherwise. As a result. Although all his plants were alive and well, they did not appear as healthy and as bushy as the first persons. One day, what happened? A big storm came. There was thunder, lightning, tremendous amount of rain, and a big storm. Throughout the night, it was uh, raining, and after this. The next morning, when these two people uh, opened their doors and looked at their backyards, what they saw was the first man who had provided amply to his plants. The plants, although looked very very healthy, they were actually not alive. Most of them were uprooted, lying dead in the backyard. On the other hand, the second person's plants. Although in the way they received everything in meager amounts, they were standing tall and erect. Hardly any of them was uprooted and was lying dead on the ground. You must be wondering why. The man too wondered as to why this happened. My plants were way healthier than this man's plants. Then how did this happen? So he asked the other person that how come your plants are alive and mine are all uprooted? To which the neighbor <coughs> gave a very very interesting answer. See, because you oversupplied your plants with everything, their roots got everything they needed in the superficial layer. They did not feel the need to go deep down in the soil in search for nutrients or water. On the other hand, because I gave very little to my plants, they had the internal urge to go and search for things. <clears throat> As a result, your plants' roots were quite superficial, so they got uprooted, and my plants, although they did not look very healthy, internally they were very very sturdy because they had their roots deep in the ground. A quick question to you: When did you first think that I'll study well, I'll get a good job uh, for myself? When did this happen? I went to college, maybe. Mm -hmm. I decided that yeah, I should earn, and I, I was working actually before Nikhil was born. Mm -hmm. so, but what you know pushed you into this uh, wish of studying, getting a good job? In our times, actually, everybody knew that they have to do well in their life if they have to live a comfortable life. Mm -hmm. So all of all of us, all of my friends would go in that direction, and they would make their good careers and progress. So that was a general uh, way of living at that time. That mm -hmm. all of us would work hard and try to get mm -hmm. some job. Mm -hmm. In fact, one of my friends said that, "Oh, if you're 21 and you are still..." On your parents' money, then there's something wrong with you. That was the kind of mindset I was brought up with. That was mindset. Any incident you remember wherein something was missing in your life and you couldn't get it because you were dependent on your parents? Oh, yeah. no, probably a scooter. I, I wanted to drive a scooter, and uh, my mother said that, "Look, 
we can afford only there used to be a luna or some kind of vehicle at that time which was lower than the scooter so she says then now she just mazak mein bola usne ki wo tu jab apne paise kam aayegi tab le lena i mean these are small issues i mean i cannot say that that prompted me to work hard but yes there were these kind of small uh, happinesses in life which we thought that we can spend our own money and we can get those things when we start earning ourselves Manisha ji, I can see the difference even in your face and expressions right now when you think about that. Yeah, it was it was really, and I still <laughs> that was my prized possession. Yeah, that is so nice, so nice. And as a proud uh, as a proud uh, daughter, you must have also felt good for your parents. I'm sure. Yes, I did. Now, if you just keep yourself in the position of Nikhil, who has everything in abundance. <laughs> Rather, he gets things even before he asks them. See, what is he yearning for? But man, as parents, how can we deprive them? I mean, उनके peers रहते हैं वो उसके पास में उसके पास ही है तो ऐसे कैसे कह दे कि नहीं तुमको हम नहीं दे सकते He knows that his parents are earning well, they are well off. I mean, there has to be a reason. How can we say कि नहीं तुमको अभी उसकी जरूरत नहीं है Agreed. Beyond the point, you cannot say that. बच्चे थे तब तो ठीक था लेकिन See, all of us have the tendency to think into black and in black and white. So either I over provide my child or I deprive him of anything. Did we ever use the word deprivation? Just look at it from a third person's point of view, because when it comes to Nikhil, you are emotionally too wounded to think in a neutral way. But tell me. is the only thing possible here for a parent is to over give over provide the child and absolutely deprive the child is the, are these the only two options we are talking about so see, there is a difference between thinking in extremes which is not helpful either way is not helpful and thinking in a really really healthy way that i provide my child enough so that he tastes what a comfortable life looks like but he doesn't start taking everything for granted so that the inner fire dies jana to parent ke liye thoda mushkil hai ma'am kyunki we as parents we feel that nahi iski age mein sab sabke paas mein hai to iske paas mein bhi hona chahiye that that is a general that thing. is a wish i agree what is important to you your wish or nikhil's future opd adola Yeah, Nikhil's future. Yes, of course. You'll have to choose how much importance you give to a wish of yours, and what are you ready to lose in turn of it. नहीं पर ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि उससे वो और नाराज हो जाएगा कि माय पेरेंट्स दे हैव एवरीथिंग स्टिल दे आर नॉट प्रोवाइडिंग मी विथ थिंग्स दैट माय फ्रेंड्स हैव तो वो एक वो नेगेटिव एक उसमें भी ना चला जाए वो बच्चा वो शायद हमारी बात नहीं समझेगा कि हम उसके भले के लिए कर रहे हैं देखा है बचपन में उड़ाते हुए that for a kite to gain good heights at times we have to pull it very very tightly yes yes sir but pull it too tight it we also need to see how it, it's managing and also we need to put it loose give it space to hover now if you have flown a kite you will realize manisha ji that it's a balance between pulling tight and giving it uh, some space or setting it loose you keep on pulling tight it will break you just set it all loose and it will wander away it will never come back to you so it is a balance between pulling tight and setting loose we need to go in this process together but i need you to understand all the principles accept them before you leave this room today because if you are doubtful it will again reflect on to your behavior and secondly very very importantly i don't want you to go and get fixed into the trap of parental guilt parental 
पेरेंटल गिल्ट गिल्ट ओके नहीं वो तो रहता है मैं डजेंट हेल्प यू इन एनी वे या इट डजेंट मे बी डजन बट लगता तो है ना बच्चे के लिए कि हमने इतना किया या शायद मेरी ही गलती है मेरी परवरिश में कुछ कमी रह गई कि अभी ही इज बिहेविंग लाइक दिस दैट इज वेरी एक्सेप्ट लेट अस एक्सेप्ट आवर इमोशंस एज द इमोशंस ऑफ अ पेरेंट लेट अस रिस्पेक्ट दोस इमोशंस बट लेट अस नॉट गेट ड्राउंड इन देम बिकॉज़ वी वांट टू डू समथिंग फॉर आवर किड ओके Right now, it will be a walk on a tight rope for you when you will be dealing all these things with Nikhil, okay. and you will be able to walk that rope only and only if you are balanced from within. Okay. We are going I, to take. I'll definitely. I'll try, man. I'll try definitely. So we are going to take small steps. Okay. Today we are just we have talked about three principles of communication. Yes. Yes. We'll apply for a week and see what happens. If things go wrong, I'm here to talk it out with you, and we can change our course once again. Fine. Okay. Yes. I'll Fine. I'll just end this conversation, Manisha Ji, with a small question for you. Okay. Hanji, so Goli. Uh, tells you the importance of this journey that you are going to start new. Hmm. Let's say you have pain in your abdomen, very sharp pain, unbearable pain, and you rush to your general practitioner, your family doctor. He examines you and says, "Ki Manisha, this is appendix, ha, huh? appendix pain, and you need to get operated and remove this appendix immediately." So you say, "Okay, doctor, suggest me whom should I visit? Let me get it done." So he gives you a name. He writes down a name. You visit that surgeon. Now the surgeon examines you and says, "Yes, Manisha ji." You have an inflamed appendix. We'll remove it. Hmm? So let's plan the surgery after six hours. You don't eat anything, and we'll get it removed. You know what? I love all my patients, huh? But you know what? I haven't done performed an appendectomy before this. Hmm. Huh? I haven't. But you know what? I love my patients very much. I won't let anything happen to them. What would you do? Will you get admitted? Yes. No. I don't think so. I mean, I have to be confident in the person. I mean, he has to be experienced. The person. But he's saying he loves you. As a patient, he loves you. That's me. that's okay. But still, I mean, I'm putting my life in his hand. So that experience counts. <laughs> What we are trying to see is love is not enough. Okay. Skills are required. So, as Nikhil's mother, you love him tremendously. You love him enormously. That is not the question. The question is: Are you willing to gather skills which will help you to help him better till the time comes that he approaches us? Okay, I get it. Yeah. So, love, emotions, guilt. everything accepted skills are more important and here we will be talking only about working and improving on your skills my skills yes before okay before As working on his skills okay fine are you 100% yes. now yes now no now i get where we are going to yes <laughs> i think yeah i should i am more comfortable now all right I, i think i should be able to contribute but definitely i'll need your guidance and you have to guide me through this journey of course we are in this partnership now and let's yeah. start one small step at a time thank you ma'am okay. thank you so much so see you next week and yes. just follow the three rules we have talked about and yes. let's go slow and peacefully okay fine yeah thank you so much you next thank week. you yeah thank you okay Thank you so much, Manisha ji. So, guys, it was very entertaining, also knowledge. <laughs> so, so I am I am saving my appendix here. <laughs> Good one, sir. Uh, I think uh, uh, we should. Uh, Tofan sir, should we uh, take questions now?
we can take some questions from the hr it is uh, already 915 is there uh, so for the before before taking questions how did we proceed in the interview what did you actually do in the interview a, a, a brief summary about that sure sure sir so um, initially we started with the principles of developmental gradient of a child and communication so that part i did not repeat in the session because we had already talked about the principles next uh, we first tried to pacify the mother in terms of her emotions when she was very very anxious and worried as to her the life of her son and once we did that we mirrored her emotions we empathized with her telling her that i can understand your concern i too am in the same boat just trying to normalize her situation so we tend to pathologize situations when it comes to our emotions and our near and dear ones and normalizing helps in this case that was point number 1 point number 2 was understanding her point of view as to what is wrong here the mother was constantly talking about the son then the second important step that i tried to do was shift her focus from her son to her she was again not very much willing because she kept on saying that uh, you know what is in my hand and he doesn't talk to me so that often becomes a task when while dealing with parents that you know we can't do anything and you cure our child as if by magic so again we need to spend a couple of minutes there very very patiently trying to tell them and empower them that they are the best people who if have proper skills can navigate their child better then i think as the session progressed and she talked about things this was the classic rebt approach uh, that i used here that focusing on to the factors within control rather than focusing on a or the trigger which is leading to all these disturbances and how i can take ownership of my contribution in the process and how i can change as you must have seen i used a lot of metaphors and examples so that the client understands the principles better otherwise what happens is the change is very very superficial the client says okay i have understood everything but finds it very very difficult to apply it when actually the crisis situation comes so with all these examples and stuff we gradually brought into her contribution in the development and well being of uh, her child again we touched a couple of things like um, answering her question so although the question was very very abrupt i tried to conclude it bring it to some um, meaningful uh, full stop there and then answered the question as to why this happens because again this haunts the parents that in spite of giving everything no why my son does like that and lastly i just summed up by repeating what she is going to try and again the crux behind all this that we are not doing this to cure her son or something like that but it's a journey together and it's a partnership together and we have to go the way uh, by dealing with ourselves first and later on uh, with the person whom we love the most that is our child so in a nutshell thank you so much so, so she she went for the treatment of her son and now she is under the therapy Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, let me uh, invite the chairperson, Savita Ma'am and Dr. Nidhi, uh, for your uh, comments, please. Then we'll take some questions from the chat box. Okay. Well, uh, Sukanta, this was very uh, informative. Uh, you focused on uh, the one very very major issue in child development and the care of children and adolescents, that is parenting. parenting is a very important and significant task which all of us just take it for sort of granted and do it by intuition or by what we have seen or what we have learned handed down to us by from our elders and uh, in the in the cultural uh, patterns we tend to just focus on that and not uh, do it more uh, i uh, more than scientifically i think uh, uh, more uh, systematically and uh, in, and with great amount of understanding uh, the the principle and the meaning behind uh, our actions our own actions and uh, uh, behavior uh, that has impact on the on the children and uh, today's uh, your presentation pres primarily was focused only on parenting and parental aspects uh, i thought initially that you would be talking about the child the adolescent 
how the, they have to be handled and how to build resilience in them. Uh, but maybe that, that is for you said another session. And uh, parenting again, I think it becomes uh, when we are realizing and gradually learning and recognizing it to be one of the very, very important and significant skill, tool, knowledge, learning that we must all have and which for which we do not have as yet any systematic kind of uh, learning platforms. And uh, various principles that you highlighted, they were very important. And other thing which I would say is that you try to make a more an emotive contact with the patient rather than informative. It's not simply kind of giving information, do this, do, don't do this, like a kind of a prescriptive approach. It was not a prescriptive approach. It was more like a participatory and an emotive approach where the person had to empathically understand the value or, or the message that was being conveyed. And then hopefully, uh, let's see, I mean, the, the, the parent, the mother uh, is able to kind of employ some of these and bring about a change in her own behavior. So uh, this is what I will say. Uh, maybe Nidhi will, may have something to say here. Yeah, I would say a beautiful uh, session with illustrative uh, examples and specifically in layman language, like with uh, with which even a uh, common man can relate to. And the things that you have highlighted is, as Savita ma'am has said, is basically the parenting principles and which the parents also need to understand that suddenly and uh, the way they handle or parent their seven or eight year old child is not the same way as they can handle their 14 or 15 year old. Even their parenting needs to change and even their strategies need to change because the child is growing and is into a developmental phase now. And that's very important, as you highlighted, that the uh, individual or the adolescents also need some freedom, some space, some privacy of his or her own self. And they, they actually dislike the intrusiveness of the parents every now and then. So that's very important. That should be uh, uh, given as a fact to parents that even they need their privacy and their uh, uh, freedom. So let them have it. There's absolutely not a problem. But parental supervision and control is very important. And that should continue as an, as an, as, as an umbrella uh, above the adolescent. Another important thing is that uh, which you highlighted in your session is that uh, it's very important to listen to the adolescent sit and listen rather than always lecturing the adolescent. Sit and listen and be open to opinion of the adolescent also. It's not always that the adolescent would be wrong. They might be right in their perspective. Maybe it needs some discussion. Maybe it may lead to some negotiations and some solutions thereafter. So it's very important to listen to the adolescent also. So these are very important things that have been highlighted. And I hope there are uh, future practical uh, sessions continuing with the, uh, with the one today. Because this was probably just an initial session with the parent. There is much more to do with the parent and the adolescent himself or herself for some changes to occur actually in the, in the adolescent and in the family atmosphere per se. Thank you. A few raised hands. Are they still there? There are many questions in the chat box. Amrit? Yeah, you start. You start. Yeah, so uh, please tell me, uh, you said he avoid talking to the child about studies. Okay, so till how long? His exam is next month. His board exam is next month. So what do I do now? Let Do I let him fail? Sir, uh, had this parent come to me before board exams, then this would not have been the flow of the session. Then our goal would have totally been how to help your child focus on your exam preparation right now. So this we consider that in the normal span of the year, the parent has come and that too, I have given her this task only for one week. So uh, there is a very beautiful story given by Vinoba Bhave, the freedom fighter. He has compared all of our minds uh, with a house. Hmm? So he says the, all the good qualities in a person are like a door and all the negative qualities in that person are like the wall. Now, if I want to enter somebody's house, will I enter through the door or through the wall? Of course, through the door. So, if I have to enter any person's inner circle or trust circle, I'll have to enter through the doors and doors are good qualities. So, here, if the parent continuously talks 
talks about the thing that uh, the child is weak in or is lagging in it will be like hitting my head on the wall and it won't help so first i have to enter that person's house establish trust rapport and then i'll have to talk about the corrections or the changes but this is a very common mistake that happens in communication that we start with the walls we bang our heads and then say this person is not open to me why would that person be if we are just talking and in a you not know, complaining way so that was just for one week to help the mother establish a neutral communication with her son once she has entered gained space into the child's world once again these things are of course going to come but that of course cannot be the start by which the mother has to uh, you know rekindle the communication with her son so just for a week okay and are we over providing our children you said ki uh, the amenities should be just enough yeah so sir this is a very trick question and every parent has to think for himself or herself there is a very thin line between over providing and providing optimally i very uh, very specifically use this term wherein you have to provide that much so that the child tastes what living a successful life looks like but at the same time you don't have to let the child drown in it so that he loses the importance of everything and starts everything taking everything for granted so it's a very delicate balance that how much we are providing and what are we holding back so that the child has that develops that fire within him that i do want to earn this kind of a lifestyle so this is i mean very very subjective for each parent but something that every parent needs to think about sure and and the child was having a phone addiction so so any any brief on that there is a question in the chat box ma'am at present time most of the children have phone addiction i want to know about the basic tips how to deal with the phone addiction okay there is so, a corollary question also madam to it sorry. how to handle impulsivity in teenagers especially due to increased screen time i think we can take that question together uh okay so i'll just brief a couple of of things about it uh, of course because of the shortage of time so first is the principles of managing screen addictions are the same as we go for any uh, hard substance addiction point number 1 which can be of course uh, read in any book second is uh, when we talk of something like screen addic- addiction or mobile addiction in adolescents most of the times it is not in the parents hands to just remove that phone or take it away confiscate the phone from the child then here the choice price principle is something that the parents can start working with thirdly uh, the point where um, we talk about negative and positive reinforcement here the only word of concern or caution is today if i just bluntly disallow uh, my child from using the phone today my children have access to many many things and they might go to the wrong way of earning their mobile back so instead of being very very rigid and thinking of things like confiscating all together i will have to use a very very balanced approach of positive and negative reinforcement so that the child um, understands what is ultimately important to him and then manages his screen time last and the fourth uh, point is not a very positive point to hear but again the same thing that uh, i discussed last time after having that case with that adolescent is that parents need to know that some things will be totally beyond their control and in such a scenario you know for example there is a borderline personality a girl with borderline personality coming to me and she is having this mobile addiction um i had had this case wherein the mother talked about reducing the screen time and mobile usage and she uh, changed the wifi password and blah 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 and she did this thing within two days the girl got an iphone the mother was clueless as to where she got that iphone from now of course she might be having some friends with from whom she got it we don't know but today children have access to many things which parents don't even know so there is no point in directly diving into this kind of uh, what you call dushmani with them so that they go on to other tracks 
and therefore when we talk about reinforcement it differs from the reinforcement which we read in textbooks so again with adolescence this has to be a very very balanced approach somewhere lastly as i said the parents need to know where to stop so instead of you know they focusing on decreasing the mobile time of their kid if they can think of or work on something positive that adds meaning to their child life child's life something that gives perspective to the child's life better then again the balance becomes better so we need to shift our uh, focus from you know making the child do something less to adding something which the child wants to do so that this thing is balanced better yeah shweta in the chat box want to ask suppose uh, someone sends the child to a boarding school because i cannot control them i want to send them to the boarding school what is your opinion <laughs> sir this is a very vague question uh, i i know that in a position shukdev madam i i'll tell the full answer she has been asked the question looking forward to the guidance on how to deal with my 18 year old girl who is short tempered and rebellious who wants to go out to do her graduation from a different city we as parents are hesitant thank you and was for your help so she wants guidance on what how to deal with her daughters two to three times she has put this question okay so i'll just again okay, answer in a couple of uh, sentences so the principle here is quite simple one day my child is going to venture out into the world hmm? if i stop my god daughter from going today maybe if not for graduation for post graduation she is going to go out now the only concern that parents generally have here that while she goes for post graduation her maturity might be more but there is also the other side to this coin that if she goes out later till then maybe her personality pattern her temperament her rigidity has also increased so there are pros and cons to both these things the lcm here the bottom line here is very very simple let my child go out of the house whenever he or she wants my focus shouldn't be the age of the child when she ventures out my focus should be my relationship with my child when she ventures out so that whenever she falls down she has 100% trust to call me back home that my parents won't put up a finger on to me pehle hi bola tha mat ja ye she won't have to listen to this rather she will get support and guidance so rather than the age at which my uh, child goes out it's the trust that my child has that it's a journey of your life you will have to go there at any point if you fall down if somebody puts a pistol on your head and say give me your belongings any difficulty any crisis we are a phone call away so the learning journey of my child has to continue and me i should be in the role of a parent and a supporter that i should be like a rock whenever and if she falls down so that's again my personal opinion on this <laughs> thank you so much thank you uh, tofan sir over to you i no, think no, i think over to me. i just appreciated the answer by us yes sir but then we have to end it sir it's 9:40 around 9:35 9:30 is already and and the and there are too many requests for a separate session on phone addiction actually uh, so called phone addiction actually we wanted to do that but uh today uh, only the parent could be handled so if we can request myself amrit and tufan sir can request sukuda to come again because the ch- we have I not talked to that also so maybe sir what we we can do is then we sh- we won't uh, do the practical part because in you know, a demonstration it never goes as per what i want to say it always will go according to what the participant wants then we can just talk about mobile addiction screen addiction and have it a theoretical perspective part and some case vignettes you can discuss madam of course sir of course of course but not live demos no 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 alim is active with live demos yes sir chalo to fans your comments please sir today's session has been very much interesting as arun marwale i think he commented that it was just like as a watching a movie thank you sukta for a nice preparation but one thing strikes me we had been discussing about the parent who comes with a problematic problematic condition to our clinic 
and we guide that parent. But ideally, if we are thinking for the society, this guidance should reach all the parents. So this has to be part of massive awareness, which is the main solution, rather than waiting for a rich parent to come with the aid to our clinic. I think all the 200 and odd psychiatrists over here. So then those who come, they are above average middle class people. Others are being ignored from, from, the, from the benefits of this discourse. And you must have that in mind that we must reach out to the parents in general. That, that is most essential. And in such way that you have done today. <laughs> and another thing, we can devise ways for, and Dr. Malhotra is there, she is an authority in child psychiatry in India. And second, she has also a lot of social perspective in her thinking. I have interacted with her a lot of times. And another thing, when I'm thinking of this uh, porn addiction, nowadays you cannot take it away. A student can only read if she has a laptop or a phone. And this present situation has again shifted. All the examinations are being shifted. Those, But if for studying, you allow me to go look at the phone for six hours, why not for me another two hours? How to answer that? So the next session we talk about phone addiction, I think uh, you have to take this part into consideration. You cannot just uh, you don't uh, use phone for this. You just attend your classes and close down the laptop. It's not possible. And as you rightly told, our children are much ahead of us. Thank you very much for the deliberation. And it is very nice. It reminded me of one of Khalil Gibran's comments. Your children came through you, not from you. It's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Supriya Madam. I'll wait the, for vote of thanks, formal vote of thanks. Vote of thanks. I'll just like to thank Sukta for coming again and again. <laughs> but then we want you again. <laughs> and 350 viewers today.